Forget about all those other DIY and so-called hacks. I'm going to show you how I prep metal surfaces every day in my shop, and you can too, and in less time and for less money than you think. What's up everybody, my name is Justin, and besides this channel, I own and operate a metal fabrication shop. And over the years, I've heard of and tried all of those other methods to clean metal surfaces, and I'm here to tell you, they don't work. They don't work. So whether you're trying to remove mill scale before welding, or need to clean up some surface rust to prep for paint, listen up. As a commercial business, time is money, and materials cost money. And I can't afford to waste either. Oh, and make sure after the video, you check out the link to save yourself some money. First, if you're working with metal, I guarantee you have some abrasive grinding wheels around, and that seems like a logical tool to pick up. They come in all shapes and sizes and grits, but all of them, yes, even the fancy flap discs, will wear out, clog up, and ruin the surface you're working with. Abrasives are only designed to do one thing, and that's remove material. But you need to take into consideration what it is you're trying to remove. Mill scale is a combination of iron oxides and other impurities left over from the manufacturing process. And it's these impurities that clog up your discs, just like when you're sanding a thickly painted surface. So your only option is to start applying more pressure. And because the scale often melts at a higher temperature than the base material, all you're doing is transferring a ton of heat into your piece. So now, you're left with not only deep scratches, but the surface is most likely warped. Ruined. Oh, and don't fall for the gimmick of different hardness or types of materials making up the wheels. Even on these all hailed flap discs. They're all nothing but uncontrolled removal of material that leaves your once smooth surface full of deep scratches and your wallet empty with how fast they wear out. So forget all that. The second myth is a chemical bath in some kind of acid. And unless you're working in some high-tech biohazard lab, you're usually limited to white vinegar. Now, white vinegar can do some pretty amazing things, including removing some surface rust in light scale, but it takes forever. So unless you've got unlimited time on your hands and are able to fully submerge your piece, yeah, this is gonna need like a swimming pool. Save the vinegar for the kitchen. Well, that was stupid. Now the entire shop smells like vinegar. So that just leaves the only method I'll ever use. It's time efficient and effective without damaging your smooth surface. And it's made by a company you already know and trust. It's the Scotch-Brite Clean and Strip XT Pro Disc from 3M. And although it goes on your grinder, it differs from regular abrasives in two important ways. First, it's made from silicon carbide rather than silicon or aluminum oxide. And then they embed the mineral into a nylon fiber. Now this fiber not only reduces loading so you don't overheat the piece or leave deep scratches, but when it does gradually break down, it exposes new fibers with fresh mineral, so it actually keeps performing just as well as it did right out of the box. And I do mean gradually breaks down. I've been using this one for weeks now, daily. Still skeptical? Well, I could do a side-by-side -side comparison, but I don't wanna waste all those discs and all that time. But what I am going to do is I'm gonna take this brand new one out of the box and remove the mill scale from both this stick of DOM tubing and this flat plate steel. Now, that's over 20 feet, 360 degrees all the way around and 16 square feet of material. Let's see how it holds up.
Now my grinder isn't smoking and overheated. My shoulder isn't sore and look how much material I still have left. I don't know how many discs or sheets of paper I would have gone through, but what I do know is it would have cost way more than the one disc at a bargain of like less than 15 bucks. And you can take it off and throw it in your toolbox and use it for the next project and the next project and the next project and the next project and the next project. Now I'll include a link in my description below that you can click on and save some money and make this even more of a bargain. While you're there, leave me a comment where you're from and what you're working on because I love to see everybody's projects and passions. As for me, I better get back to it. But thanks for watching and go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out as I share all of my tips and tricks of the trade that I had to learn the hard way so that you don't have to.